Hi YouTube family, I'm gonna be doing a story time get ready with me today where I'm gonna be updating you about my weight and my journey as far as my surgery goes. Also a little bit of extra news that might come as a surprise to some of you. And also I have a story that will really absolutely crack you up or it's gonna absolutely make you disgusted and grossed out. So if you'd like to see how I got this look today and a get ready with me, this is only my second ever that I've done for you guys. So if you would like to see this particular look as we get ready together, just keep on watching. Here we go. First things first, I'm gonna pin this hair out of my way a little bit and then we're gonna get started. I already did put on my primer, and it was the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer, and I really like that one. I like the Tatcha too, that it is a dupe for, so I did that. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prime my under eyes with my Catrice Cam Camouflage Under Eye Primer. Um, I like this very much. It is very emollient for my dry, dry under eyes, and it just seems to plump them up to get started with. It's one of the first steps that I always do. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use my Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeshadow primer that I have absolutely fallen in love with. It takes a teeny tiny amount. This is the small tube. I know that I won't be going through that anytime soon. I would recommend that very much. And I promise you story time instead of tutorial. So here we go on story time. So okay, so let's start with um, just some basic things that are happening with me. And keep in mind my mirror is right below the camera, so I will be looking down a little bit. Um, some of the things that are happening with me. Uh, first of all, we a big announcement. We are actually moving um, again. We have lived in Central Washington for the past three years, but I have um, parents in Utah, and Utah is where I was born and raised. I raised my children there. I love Utah. It's really beautiful beautiful, especially the little area where I'm originally from. And my parents are, um, my mother is 83 this year, my dad's 86. And I just want to go home and help take care of them and spend as much time as I, as I possibly can with them. So that's kind of where we're at right now. We're getting ready to move. Hopefully we're going to be moving by October. Um, October 1st is when we're hoping to be getting done. And getting out of here so we're excited about that actually because um, even though I'm leaving my daughter behind here in Washington um, just Utah is just home for me so I'm really happy to be doing that and um, I know that a lot of you have been asking about my weight and my health I have been doing really well, you guys. I've been doing really, really well. Everything is going smoothly. The only thing I have a problem with is occasionally I get very nauseated because I can't eat things very quickly or if my stomach gets too empty and it's been too empty for too long, then it'll feel like the stuff just hits my, the food just hits my stomach like a rock. So that is kind of something that has been going on that I've been a little bit worried about. But it's normal for anybody that has had gastric bypass to have that feeling so when I do my eyeshadow it's the hardest time for me to concentrate on anything but okay so you probably are wondering how much weight I've lost as well I have lost approximately 67 pounds at this point as of this morning which is I'm doing this on a Tuesday September 2nd as of this morning I have lost um, 67 pounds so I'm really glad about that I think the last time I checked in with you I was at 53 was I at 53 I don't remember anyway I'm really glad about that the weight loss is coming off very steadily somebody else asked me about my daily diet uh, that is something that is really precarious I don't eat a lot I probably eat four times a day about a half a cup but the importance is for me to get protein in because I do take a ton of supplements now um, to keep my body getting the right amount of nutrients in it. Um, and I'll tell you about those in a minute, but let me tell you about what I eat. So um, I eat a lot of Greek yogurt and I supplement that a little bit with what's called Gen Pro, which is a complete protein that I really do love using. It's just a lovely, wonderful all around. I think it's whey based, so it's milk based, but it is a good protein. It hits all of the amino acids and it just has such a good, um, 
such good ingredients and is totally complete. And so it just works really well with mixing into anything that you have. Um, if you, you know, you can't keep something down that day, you could even just drink it. It doesn't have a taste whatsoever. It hardly has any sort of a texture to it because it just melts away in water. And like I said, I do eat a lot of yogurt, but I also eat pure protein shakes. I do one of those in the morning. That gives me about 30 grams of protein and that helps set me up for the day. And then I eat like three other meals or three other half cups. And the yogurt is about, it's about six ounces. So it's a little bit more than a half a cup, but it seems to set well with me and go really easy. So I do sit, I do eat that. I found that I can't eat eggs. I almost always will vomit those up, which is really bad. Um, I have to be real careful with meat. I have to, you have to really chew and chew and chew your meat and even get it, you know, have a little bit softer of meat in order for it not to cause you too many gastric problems. So that's kind of what my diet is. Um, I'm not on fresh vegetables yet because um, they're really hard to digest and that they're, that's why they're good for you because they have a ton of fiber and everything. So I haven't really done a ton of those yet. I am doing fresh fruit, but it's fruit that is a little bit more um, easily digestible. Like right now the peaches are on here and they're so good. Actually just about any fresh fruit I'm okay to eat at this point. I don't eat bread. I don't eat any pasta, I don't eat rice, I don't eat hardly any grains whatsoever. Uh, I just eat a lot of fresh foods. I hardly ever mix my foods, and I know that sounds weird, so I don't like sit down and make a meal where you have like your your protein and your vegetables and you know whatnot. So I might occasionally eat protein with vegetables, but in order to not make me feel queasy, I usually just stick with one food still. But I just barely hit the two month mark, you guys. I've just barely been at two, month, two months from bypass and even less than that from when I had my second surgery. So I know that that's all gonna get better and I'm not a bit worried about any of that. And then as far as supplements go, I take so many, oh my gosh, I take so many supplements, you guys. I take a multivitamin, but I take the, the high dose or the regular dose twice a day. And, um, and instead of just once a day like you are supposed to when you don't have any sort of um, weight loss surgery. So I take one in the morning, one at night. I take B1, B12 at a really high dose for the day. I also take magnesium, calcium, fish oils, and I'm drawing a blank on the rest of the ones that I take. I do take biotin because I didn't wanna lose my hair. That's happening anyway, so there's not a lot that you can do about it. I am gonna say right now that this is the foundation from um, Revolution Conceal and Hydrate, and this is in um, F7. And I normally would say that it was fine, but I've kind of lost all of my fake tan. So I'm gonna put a drop of blue in there to mix up and make it be a, just a little bit cooler because it seems to be way too warm. So I am I am mixing that. I always mix my foundations, you guys. I, I'm a mixer. And then also, let's see what else is going on. Oh, okay, so I promised you guys a story, okay. First of all, I'm gonna disclaimer, I'm gonna set this up. Um, you guys, I have a story that I just can't even believe happened to me. And it happened to me on the way home from Mexico when I had my, my first surgery. So what I want you to know though, is that if you're squeamish about vomit, throwing up, you do not want to watch this or listen to this. So I'm gonna disclaimer that right now, be forewarned that yes, it was gross. And yes, if you very have a very squeamish stomach, you are not gonna to wanna to listen to this. Okay, so that being said, and remember I told you that if you stuck around. So <laughs> um, we flew from the San Diego airport. We, we got driven across the border to the San Diego airport. We flew from the San Diego airport into San Jose. And that flight was about an hour long. Totally normal. So we get to San Diego, we have a half an hour layover, and then we're gonna go home to Seattle. So in San Diego, we get on the airplane, and again, the airplane is gonna be completely and totally packed. So we're worried about that, but we get to board early and we get a seat towards the front and then general boarding gets um, going. My husband sit by the, sat by the window and then I sat um, in the middle because I figured it would be easier for me. I don't 
care about a window or an aisle, either one. But um, I figured it would be easier for me to go to the restroom if I needed to. I didn't have to climb over people and everything. So, um, but somebody came in and she asked if she could sit right there, which is no problem. She was thinner and I was heavier at the time. And so I figured, you know, you got a skinny butt, you can sit there and that's just fine. You know, it'll be easier on us. And her and I chatted just for a minute. She was going to watch an in-flight movie. Southwest has free movies. And um, she was talking to me about the movie. It was A Star is Born. She was telling me how good the music was in it. She encouraged me to watch it, blah, 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 chit-chat, da-da-da. But, you know, the, the flight was booked. There was not one single seat, even towards the back, that was even open, even a little bit. So the flight was really, really booked. And it was so full. And we start it started to get hot because San Diego or San Jose was really hot and the plane started to get hot um, and so it was just like we were all kind of miserable and at this point I'm getting a little bit sick to my stomach and I'm not feeling really good and my husband's getting me some ice water the attendants are getting me ice water and I'm not feeling that good and I'm thinking you know oh my goodness this is not good and so I'm just kind of you know holding on and kind of doing a little bit of rocking back and forth like you do. <laughs> and the lady that was next to me, she had ordered a drink, a, a cocktail of some sort. I can't remember what it was, but she had ordered this cocktail. And um, the stewardess brought me the ice water, her the cocktail. And then we went, um, you know, I was getting sick. So I'm kind of just, you know, trying to sit up real tall and kind of trying to move around a little bit. And then just about that time, I was, um, I was, you know, feeling really bad. I, I kind of glanced over to the gal that's next to me and she is, her eyes are rolling up in her head and her head's going back like this and she's starting to vomit. She's having a seizure and she was just out of it. I mean, she was out of it. And I grabbed the back of her head and kind of pushed it forward while I was holding her head so that she wouldn't choke on her vomit. And I kid you not, you guys, her, it was like soft serve coming out of her. I have never in my life seen so much puke and it was so gross and disgusting. And I, I just screamed. I said, she's having a seizure. Help. And um, so the stewardess is coming and um, there's a person behind me yelling, somebody help her. And I'm trying to hold her so because she's going to, you know, fall one way or the other. So I'm trying to hold her head so it doesn't flop back and, you know, keep her from, you know, aspirating her vomit. And um, this person in front of me turns around, person behind me turns around and there is vomit everywhere. There is puke. I am not kidding you. She is doused head to toe in vomit. I have it all over my shoulder, all down my arm, all down my leg, everywhere. It was, it was everywhere. There, there's no way to describe how much puke there was. Okay. So she finally, they're smacking her and trying to get her to come around. And she finally starts to come around and all of a sudden, you know, she's realizing what's happening to her and she just, she just can't believe it. So they kind of shuttled her off to the bathroom so that she could get cleaned up because she was, she was covered, completely covered. And she said something before she left about garlic fries. And that's what it smelled like. It smelled like garlic puke. It was so gross, you guys. I can't even begin to tell you how nasty and sick and yucky this was. And so here I am, I am covered. It is all the way down. It's in between my seats. My seat belt is covered with it. It has dripped down between the seats and it's gone into the guy's carry on that had his underneath my seat. And uh, it was just like, holy Moses. And my husband was like, I've never seen that much puke in my whole life. And I felt the same way. She, I don't, I don't know whether she had had one too many or what it was because I, I thought when she sat down, I kind of smelled alcohol anyway. And then she went ahead and ordered another drink. So that was all. Okay. So my clothes are saturated in puke 
And thankfully we had a carry on and my husband got me some, a change of clothes down. And so, you know, I have just had abdominal surgery. I've got five open, not open, but five incisions around to be able to, for them to do the laparoscopic surgery. And I'm feeling like garbage. And I know that I can't, you know, I'm a big woman at this point, And I know that I can't go into the bathroom and change because you know how big the bathrooms are on an airplane. And so, I'm just like, this is crazy. And I finally got up after she got out of the bathroom. I finally got up and the stewardess, you know, is asking me what I want to do. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to have to try and just change like right here at the front of the plane, if that's okay. And she said, oh my goodness, yes. So she held open a cupboard um, up at the stewardess's area where they kind of sit and stuff, you know, when the plane is taking off and landing, she holds open a cupboard and she is trying to hold that open so that I can go ahead and um, change. And you guys, I, because of my incisions and because of how they were, I couldn't wear underwear. And so I only have my pants on and I have those adorable little stockings that the compression stockings that are all white so i had a long pair of pants on before but now i've got to put on a pair of like capri pants because i don't have anything other than that in my carry-on so i am standing there with only a cupboard a half cupboard that goes halfway down you know to the floor and she's standing there trying to shield me while i'm trying to change my clothes and i'm telling her that i am two days out of surgery and she's freaking out because she sees all of these incisions all over my belly and she's like oh my god and this just happened to you and we're just I'm like it's okay it's okay I don't feel bad I just need to get these vomit clothes off so I changed completely change you know thankfully I had my brassiere on I completely change and get everything on and the sort of she puts my vomit clothes my puke clothes into a bag and we just tied it up we're like we're throwing those suckers away and we just tied it up and put it you know with our other stuff and then we all kind of get settled down and everything right so as we're kind of settling down she's apologizing like crazy and i'm like you know what stuff happens don't worry about it and she's like no no i never have done anything like that before in my life and i'm like i'm sure and you know trying to reassure her that it's not as big a deal as it was because it was a big deal i mean the whole cabin smelled like garlic puke and we're all just dying and my husband at this point when i go back and i tell him how i had to change my clothes at this point he's laughing he's cracking up and he's like i mean we were both like gagging because of the smell the smell is horrible but at the same time it's you can't believe that it's happened. You can't believe that soft serve puke came out of her mouth. And then you can't believe that you got covered in it and the guy behind you. And it took us, it was a two hour flight and she did that probably about 45 minutes in. And it took us another half an hour to try and get the big chunks out of everywhere, you know, out of like between the seats and that, through that guy's stuff. And I was just absolutely insane. And you know what the weird part was, is there was a couple of stewardesses. This one stewardess was a, was a gem. She was absolutely fantastic. She made the flight bearable. But on the rest of it, what happened was these other stewardess wouldn't even help her, which I was so disgusted at. They were, they would, she would tell them to do something. They would just like walk away, which I thought was like, you got to be kidding me. She needs help, right? So anyway, we go through all of that, got all of that changed. And the rest of the flight was just smelly. It was just like, I don't even know how we even got through the rest of the flight because of how bad it smelled, honestly, but we got through it. And then we had to remain in our seats. Um, everybody that had to have a wheelchair, there was seven of us on that particular flight. So all of us that had to have a wheelchair, we had to remain in our seats and then we could get up because they were bringing wheelchairs for us all. And so what ended up happening was there was an older lady um, that was just angry at uh, everybody and everything because her flight had been um, messed up and everything had gone bad for her and it was just like this big rigmarole with her and she was just cussing out everybody she could find on her way out because she felt like Southwest had ruined everything for her so she was just 
on a rampage. It was terrible what she said to those. I felt really bad because it wasn't their fault, all the things that the actual airline had done. But anyway, so we had that rant to deal with and she was just cussing everybody out. And then we get out, she was in front of me, and then we get out and they ended up calling my name before her. She was much older than, than I was. She was, I would say she's probably in her mid to late sixties. Anyway, they ended up calling my name as um, to get the wheelchair before her and that just set her off. She was so angry at that and I was just like, oh my gosh, just give her the wheelchair. But they didn't want to do that because each person had been assigned one of us to take care of. So yeah, so that was fun. So we get off the flight, we get up out of the actual walkway that, that attaches to the airplane, whatever those are called, jetway, whatever they're called. And my husband um, peels those socks off of me because I was so embarrassed because here's this like Minnie Mouse white socks, right? Uh, you know, they're clear up to my crop pants and he just peels those off of me and he threw those away and he threw those other clothes away. And we were, we were honestly, after that, I was just, I wanted to kiss the ground in Seattle because it was like what we had been through, you know, not only this surgery, but we had been through all this other stuff. And it was just like, I just can't believe all that happened. I, I just can't believe it all happened. I just put my lips on because I can't talk and put my lips on at the same time, you guys. And I told my husband, I said, this has got to be the ultimate gross story of the century for flying. And it was the first time I had flown in 20 years. I don't fly because we just don't go anywhere like that. It was the first time I had flown in 20 years. And it was just, it was unbelievable. I still can't believe that it happened. It seems like it was such a dream when it happened, you know? But we made it home and everything turned out fine. So we were glad about that. Okay, I'm gonna go finish my lashes and I'll be right back with you. Okay, you guys, lashes done. I hope that you did enjoy this story time. It was a little bit gross, but it was a story that I think is crazy and I just wanted to just do something lighthearted. I know that we've all been in situations where things were just not good and you just had to laugh about it afterwards or you drive yourself just absolutely nuts. So I hope that you did enjoy today's story time. If you guys do like this kind of thing, I'm full of them. I got a ton of stories. So if you wanna hear more stories from me, please give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section below what you think of story time, get ready with me. Thank you guys all for giving me a part of your time and I will catch you all in my very next video. Love you, bye-bye.